Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL Hasu League, this time Group D from the round of 16 upper left-hand corner. We have Bate Toshko as the green Protoss, a Bulgarian player. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Shafir as the yellow Protoss. This is once again an all Protoss grouping. This is on Overwatch. And since this is the first video in this series, I know that part, part of my concern here is with the... BSL casts, I end up dumping a lot of videos sometimes all at once. And I prefer to have it in a playlist, and I wish I could just post the playlist and nothing else. And I know some people would prefer that like fake videos be uploaded, um, or spoilers. Moltrap's good about that. Moltrap has a little bit more free, uh, free time than I do when he's doing that. So what I will say is, and an, also I'm using Ob Studio because I believe the video quality comes out better uh, pylon here on this corner. But I wanted to get your guys' feedback on all of this. What I could do is I could leave all of the BSL games unlisted so they're not crowding everybody's feed and then just create one playlist and then just make an announcement video that the playlist is up or something like that or some markation therein. So that's one solution to the problem. The other thing is, is some people are like, well, I don't like knowing how many games are out there. I don't have an immense amount of time to do the... the sw and also I feel like it kind of interrupts the cast to do a swap in between. We do see Gateway Mirror Beerlds here on 10. Um, but the other option is, if you want to see it uninterrupted, you can go to Twitch. Watch the video there, because these are cast live. I have a live Twitch audience. Probes are going to cross each other. This is actually a great tip from Gretorp the other day. Is when you see kind of this mirroring like this, you have a general idea that your build orders are somewhat close, if not identical. Simulator here from Bate, and bottom right-hand corner, I hope that's Bate instead of Bait. Bottom right-hand corner, <laughs> that would be embarrassing if it's like... It's not even Bate, it's just Bait Toshko. That's gonna be like, that should be an exclamation. That sounds like a really heroic exclamation. Bait Toshko. I'm pretty sure it's Bate. Uh, upper right hand, <laughs> we're gonna see how many probes go into gas. We got two probes thus far, and it is holding steady at two to get a little bit more of a mineral balance. We'll see if a third one goes in in a little bit. There are two gateways up, so it's gonna be more of a zealot heavy opener. For Shafir, but he's got this is a pretty sizable map, I gotta say. Maybe I missed the third part. No, I think that's still two. Maybe he's gonna pull it off once he's done harassing a little bit here. There's a cybernetic score. First cell has been produced, and it looks like this cell is going to chase this probe rather than try to do any additional pressure. This is a ramp, a uh, little bit more of a sizable ramp um, area, and kind of a wide open natural expansion. The one thing that in Overwatch that I think is critical here, where maybe a gateway opener. Uh, a heavier gateway opener can be more advantageous is this feature right here because if you can get control of this area it can really completely change the flow of the game a simulator now up Shaf for Shafir doesn't look like he is going to press anything more past these three zealots let's see if he can actually we'll see if he continues to pump zealots out but it looks like he's after this initial three zealot pressure he's thinking about pulling back into more standard pressure we do have a single zealot and a dragoon on the front second gateway coming and honestly, between all of this, I do believe with a decent amount of micro bot, they should be able to fight this back fairly easily, which is going to give a slight early game advantage to Bate, because whenever you have Dragoons in sufficient numbers out before your opponent gets the Zealots out, that usually yeah gives you the slight edge. However, this is a good amount of surface area, and there are no probes to support this, so if this Zealot gets taken out, we might see some micro, but that's not going to be before that second Dragoon is in this base. So my guess is, is Bate is just happy to go ahead and let all this action happen. So Zealot down. Dragoon is now taking on the on the Zealots uh, directly. However, as you can see, are they even going to get into the mineral line? Usually you want to at least get like a pro kill or something like that. Or So you get a scout, but you don't necessarily even get a pro kill. Trying to micro through. The Dragoon's actually stopping for a second. They're going to have to go through the probe line. Looks like that Zealot trying to pull back. Even if you end up losing the Zealot, there's a pro kill. So managed to get one. So that's going to... Every little bit helps at this stage. Is he gonna get, yeah, okay. Dies right there. So, was able to get additional scouting information, so that is something, but unfortunately, that's not gonna be equalized. As you can see, Shafir has the probe inside of his base. We do see range now being upgraded for Shafir, and a sizable amount of Dragoons plus range being upgraded as Bate is feeling it. He's like, okay, you wasted three zealots. You don't have any of that on the ground. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe go ahead and, I, so there's two things he can do. One, he can just try to engage this, and with the cross positions, and an equal number of gateways, I don't think he's going to end up with an overwhelming advantage. But two, what he can do is he can just stage his army out here to deny this natural expansion. So I kind of like this movement, not as an aggressive forward attack, but just as a denial attack to make sure that Shafir just can't sneak out and take an additional nexus. But no, Bate actually pushing. Okay, now 
re reassessing, but no, he's going to go four and four, and as a result, getting a little bit greedy, going to lose a Dragoon. And now he's going to have to back right back up. I think, yeah, it would have been... This is just my personal opinion on that. That might have been better to re-engage. But now Shafir going out a little bit too far. He's going to end up five on four. Nice micro from Bate. Just singularly focusing each of these Dragoons. You just saw the perfect micro here and a little bit more uh, scattered micro from Shafir on the initial engagement. And he's going to once again be able to take control and press into the natural. Things not looking good for Shafir. He's going up to a third gateway. Range is finishing opposite side. It looks like Bate is got a robo. So he's playing a little bit more of a economically passive game. Wants to make sure he has information out there. Two Dragoons now holding the high ground. Four. So this is definitely going to deny that natural expansion from Shafir. One, and it looks like, yeah, Bate is setting up to go ahead and take his natural expansion. So if, if, from here he goes Observatory and Robo, by the time, I believe, by the time, if I have the timings in my brain correct these days, by the time these gateways have that production advantage over what Bate is funneling out, he should have a Reaver on the ground. Plus, there's a big advantage for Bate having position here. Because he can just micro these Dragoons. He can stutter step them and delay Shafir for quite a bit of time. to And especially do some bottlenecking here on that bridge as long as he has sufficient numbers to do it. And he'll be able to more or less create more time for himself to get in, any sort of defensive re uh, response should anything pour out. One thing for Shafir here is this is kind of where you have to gauge the level of your player. Because sometimes you can have a bunch of Dragoons on the front and more Dragoons hidden behind. And it's just kind of a bait. It's like, yeah, go ahead and bring your army down. Then I'm just going to go ahead and crush you with my army. So Shafir doesn't necessarily know. But at least looking at this, he... It, well, maybe this might be a tell if he could uh, sneak down. The problem is, is sneaking down to check, you end up taking damage as well. Observatory... Sorry. Robotics Facility, Observatory, and Robo are up for Bate. Plus he has that natural expansion. So he's taking a sizable lead. We do have the Observatory... Or sorry, the Robotics Facility and Robotics Support Bay down for Shafir. So what Shafir is going to need to do is to get back in this is hope for either some supremely good Reaver Micro, in my opinion. Oh, and the Zealot's actually marching down. They're going to die before they're even position in a position to respond. So now that three gateway is popping out, the Observatory Observer is right there. It's going to see everything. Does lose two Dragoons. Again, he can rehold that ramp. Shafir kind of muddling around a little bit, and he's going to maybe take the long way around. But also, Bate going to see all of this, and you can see he's got that follow-up Reaver that's just about finished, and that's going to allow him to hold his position. He might want to shuttle to, to follow that up, though, because there might be split forces here with this shuttle and this Reaver moving out uh, for Shafir. But yeah, Shafir, he's got to go forward. He's got to out-micro Bate to get back in this match. Bate, you can see, taking position right on that ramp. And also, this is the other thing with going that three-gate and all of the delays that happen in between. He has to go the long way around. Uh, because of this ramp, just because he does not want to engage on that short ground and have all of that action happen. Weaver continuing to produce Scarabs out in the front, so it's prepared. So it's got that full Scarab complement pre-upgrade. Now Shafir sitting back and realizing, you know what, this attack is foolhardy, so what I need to do is I need to go ahead and plant my Nexus, maybe go for a Reaver Harass, and hope for the best. And I, I think that's what he's going to do here. It is possible that he might just go for a forward assault using the shuttle um, and hope for some micro with that protection. Maybe he can go for a split force thing and try to sneak in the Reaver behind and kill some probes on the main. That might be a way to get back in this match. But currently, supplies are even. Bate has had his expansion up for longer. He's now pumping out of three gateways. And having that economic advantage over these next few minutes is going to give him the lead in that space of time. Two Reavers on the ground. Here's the engagement. Shafir moving up. Is catching a lot of these goons with their pants down. They are not engaging. Attacking that front. The Reaver is also not firing from the back. So that might be an advantage for, Jaf uh, for Shafir. And it looks like they aren't getting good spread on where they're trying to land. But Shafir only has a single Reaver versus the two Reavers in the background. He did get the focus fire. Uh, Bate just not microing very well in this fight thus far. Maybe not paying attention, but he still has overwhelming forces because of the close, re uh, the close engagement point. And also just a superior amount of Reavers overall. And that spread just allowed them to do all sorts of damage. Three more Dragoons pushing in. So this is three Dragoons versus a single Reaver. They might be able to take this out and maybe get some bonus kills on some probes to even things out in the natural expansion. Bate actually not pulling his probes out. He is just leaving them there currently. Observer moving the rest of the way down just in case. But yeah, we've already got, what, two probe kills. And now the Dragoon's pushing across. 
an equalization. And actually, I think Shafir with that might have might have eked his way back in because we are at even probe count now, even supply. He doesn't have vision comparatively. He doesn't have the observer in the base, which is critical. But he has dragoons that are pressing into that natural with superior numbers and continuing to get probe kills on Bate. And you can see the probes actually pulling off the line. This is more delayed mining time. So nice recovery from Shafir, getting back into this. And even, even if he loses these Dragoons, honestly, I feel like it's worthwhile. Now it is six on three, so he might want to just go ahead and peel back with what he's got. It looks like he's just going to go ahead and sacrifice them. But I think he's happy happy to have this exchange. A couple probes piling up here in the background. No, he's going to continue to engage. He needs to be careful with this. Take your victories and, and pull back. But now, Shafir, with that series of engagements, Bate not microing on the... At, at, and you can just see how just a little bit of failed micro on that expansion on close build orders can really cost you the game. I feel like Bate was in a position to take this, and now all of a sudden he is drastically behind. 44 probes to 36 just now. Fourth and fifth gateway being planted. So Shafir going for more of an aggressive position as far as gateway units. Not sure if he knows if he's in the lead or not at this stage. Forge being plopped, fifth gateway. Bate just trying to mirror that build overall. And both players, as far as like the flat reaver count, trying to see if I missed a shuttle someplace. I don't think so. Thought I saw a second shuttle being built. Now, Bate, with his attack force, realizing that he took a lot of damage there, moving out with his own two reavers. And oh my goodness, Shafir is moving out of position. This is a large number of dragoons, two reavers, and I see no counter reavers. There's only a single counter reaver with no shuttle walking its way back. Now, the same thing happening on the other side of the map. And I think that's the lack of observers in position to deal with it. Okay, keep in mind, these Dragoons might be able to sneak a kill on the Reaver behind. Nice movement from Bate to go ahead and try to provide a surround. Unfortunately, these Reavers are not on top of these Dragoons, which is where you want to be. But some nice shuttle micro from behind. Now these Reavers able to turn around. Some good spread from Jafir to make sure that those Reavers aren't doing as much damage as they potentially could have. Both Reavers getting taken out. And nice defense from Shafir, actually. He did, I was looking for, and you can see where this pylon played a significant role, where it just caused some cross attack. Bate, getting a, his own expansion, is going to have to cancel it. Yeah, he was hoping to apply some pressure, get an expansion behind that, but instead Shafir moving across that map, that observer seeing it, and he's going to go ahead and cancel it. Maybe get up some cannons first and proceed from there, and that's where, I got to say, that was just amazing micro from Shafir. A nice adjustment, and Bate getting a little, little bit unlucky. If he had just had one Reaver shot that managed to make it into this pile, one Scarab exploding out there, it might have been the difference in the match. But Shafir getting that, turning around, getting a nice pincer movement, and also some nice spread on the Dragoons as they're moving into that engagement point, ends up, again, allowing him to establish that lead. And he's doing a great job with his macro. His macro is basically what's winning him this match. Level 1 weapons upgrading from both players. We do have a cannon building somewhere. I kind of want to see where that cannon's at. Cannon at the natural... That's going to allow Shafir to be a little bit more aggressive. One, th This is going to be the critical thing here. Bate positioning to take his third. Shafir positioning to take his third. One significant advantage here for Bate is, is Bate's had information this entire time. He's had observers in his opponent's base and had a good look at what his opponent's been up to this entire time. <clears throat> Another probe actually hanging out. I'm wondering if he's debating which expansion he wants to take, and maybe he doesn't want to take this expansion simply because it, yeah, it tends to be exposed to these Dragoons doing ends around. You can see Shafir has a really spread out attack force that's moving, and unfortunately, Bate might be able to just straight up engage this and pick off, and this can be the difference in long-term battles. Might be, yeah, so there's one straggling Dragoon that might get taken out. There's some additional Dragoons that are trying to flee, but this is a cutoff route, and this is going to be an interesting engagement. Bate getting caught a little bit out of position as well. Now the two Reavers out in front re-engaging, and I think Bate, if he can just lock down on this and attack move while moving, he is going to get the better end of this fight. Yeah, Dragoons on Dragoons, he has better concavity, plus he has a superior number of Dragoons before they're gathered on Shafir. Shafir just split, and yeah, this is just a bad engagement point. Shafir getting caught with his pants down. And unfortunately taking too much damage. He's looking for a location to re-engage to try to even things out. And it is a moving Dragoon battle, but now the Reaver is going to be able to swing around. Reaver's on the opposite side moving across, and it looks like, wow, 
Bate getting brave with this. He's going to go ahead and just micro that across while he goes ahead and drops at the natural location. This could be the difference in this match. First probe hit only gets a single probe, hill, uh, probe kill, unfortunately. Zealots moving their way across. He has disrupted mining at the natural, but he only got a handful of probe kills. Is he going to be able to get the shuttle out? This is the scary part. This is a slow shuttle. He might want to camp it right here. There are Dragoons to intercept it. The Zealots that managed to walk all the way to the natural expansion are getting cleaned up opposite corner. Bate floating a bit. Oh, this is a lot of Zealots. Do we see? Uh, and it looks like Zealot leg speed being upgraded. Unfortunately, with slow Zealots, they mostly just walk as a buffer. If they can, if they can get across the bridge, though, if they can get across the bridge. Chat pointing this out. I appreciate it. He lost the shuttle. Moved the shuttle up here. Ended up losing it. That's a critical loss, honestly. Those two Reavers. Twelve o'clock base. Bate trying to seal that. He does have a superior supply count way behind in the overall pro count and he's also out of position to defend this but Shafir making the same mistake again also with a lot of slow zealots he does have two reavers he needs to be very careful with the shuttle though if this shuttle gets oh the shuttle gets taken out again Bate can just kind of slow walk his way back against these zealots now and reposition and he might be able to sneak these reavers out of position and get a, a counter snipe on them counter reaver moving its way across leg speed is going to kick in in a little bit but not before these zealots are getting cleaned up on the front the Reavers, once again exposed, again with no shuttle, they're going to get picked off in that back corner. And Shafir looks like his army is going to get wiped out here, I believe, with the closer reinforcement point. And this is without taking out that 12 o'clock base. So, oof. Yeah, everything getting wiped out here. Large standing army for Bate, so he's going to be able to hold that position. Three cannons on defense, and it looks like Bate is going to take the swing here. Even though he is behind in the overall probe count, he's going to be ahead in the number of bases. Shafir moving out. He wants to go ahead and try to take his nexus, but honestly, Bate might be with what he has on the ground. His leg speed is just now finishing in a more advantageous situation. He might be able to just go down and snipe that or otherwise disrupt that. Both players' mains are looking thin, by the way. Shafir's completely mined out because he had a larger number of probes. So this is the one mining base. So it's basically one base versus two. And Bate was able to transfer probes very rapidly to that 12 o'clock. It looks like almost exactly as it came up so nice probe transfer and that is going to give him a sizable advantage moving in to the 17 18 minute mark Shafir in a lot of trouble he needs to defend this six o'clock and defend his natural honestly and he's been spotted across this entire way these observers have been absolutely everywhere he's going to move up with his own probe that's going to get killed by that cannon Bate needs one good engagement really if he can engage the natural if he can engage here at the 6 o'clock, looks like there is a shuttle waiting here. I think what he's going to do is he's going to wait for that Nexus to complete, then make that engagement, which I think is clever. He doesn't want a cancellation. So he, he sees it. There is a cannon warping in, but this cannon's going to be too late for that warp in across. And he sees all of this army movement. Plus, there might be probes there to snipe as soon as that Reaver's there. And this cannon isn't going to defend against... From this position, it's not going to defend from a drop in that corner. Now Bate making his way across that ramp, moving the Reaver down. Looks like it might be a dud shot right there, but diving into the natural expansion. So this is, Shafir is pinned between a rock and a hard place. He needs to defend that six, but he also needs to defend his natural expansion. Probe's getting killed across that edge, and he's losing his one mining base. So Bate with an excellent, an excellent maneuver here at the end of the game, closing it out. Well played on his part. GG. We're going to move on to game two between Bate and Shafir momentarily.